It's brought a mail the Hawaiian peacock just to remix. He likes aqua blue water. And his boy Anthony. I said, I'm sorry, Mrs. Peacock. But it's just me and Mel and that aqua blue water. Aqua blue water. Open up your eyes, ah. Uh. And now we're free, say aqua blue water is all I see. Bluer than the sky, and it's all oh so deep. Say island to island, just you and me. Ja, as a guide, nah. What more we need, say sail away. Ra, ra, like a dungeon dragon. Aloha, this is your boy, Badamel. AKA the Hawaiian Peacock here with another video for you. In this video here, it's about that time. It's about that time to break forth a rhythm and a rhyme. Sorry, man, sorry about that. Got lyrics on the dome, man, I'm sorry. I'm kind of hyped up. You know why I'm hyped up? How about that remix by Anthony, Unconventional Aquatics? He just didn't stop at just the regular. He did a remix for me. So we had to play that. That was that intro remix. Thanks, Anthony, I appreciate that remix. <laughs> he had the hair wet, like Aquaman, like coming out of the water. It's like, what? <laughs> he got the Kong or the bongo playing, wet hair. Aqua blue water. I mean, what can you ask for, man? We are going to take Susan Lucci out of the quarantine 10 gallon tank, introduce her back into the 55 gallon tank in Junior Peacock's room where she came from, where she had that fab fabulous time with her man Gucci. So Susan Lucci is getting reunited with Gucci. And I'm just gonna leave with this song because it fits perfect. Reunited and it feels so good. Reunited cause we understood. There's one but ding ding and they be ding 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 ding. That's all I know, sorry, I don't know the rest. We're gonna introduce her to that tank. I'm gonna show you the tip or I'm gonna show you a trick on how I reintroduce fish after quarantine into their tank especially the Mbuna tank. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Mbuna are extremely aggressive. They say, I mean, just they, I don't know who they is, but they say that Mbuna are the most aggressive out of the African cichlids. So there's a way that I use to introduce new Mbuna to an established Mbuna tank. Um, I'm gonna show you guys my technique. It works for me. I got 12 Mbuna in there and I'm like 12 for 12 right now. Uh, although some of them were introduced together at once, but, um, you need a lot of hiding places with Mbuna. Mbuna means rock dweller or rock fish. And so they love to hide in the rocks. You need a lot of rocks, a lot of rocks for Mbuna to hide in. So that's what I got. But also I'm gonna do a big water change. That's kind of part of my technique. What I do is a huge water change. I'm gonna show you guys that. Then I slowly add the fish, kind of fly under the radar. And uh, everything usually works out good. Throw some food in there. It kind of just takes their mind off of what's going on in the tank, move a couple rocks around, and it just, it messes with them. I guess mentally, I don't know. But it works for me. And so far I'm 12 for 12, like I said. But not only that, we're gonna go under the 120 gallon tank that you see behind me, and we are going to feed the fry. Yep, all 18 fry are doing great. I can't wait to show you guys. They're getting big, um, how I feed them and what I feed them. And um, yeah, I'm super excited to get into this video. All right, so let's go. All right, as you can see, Susan Lucci, she's hungry. I'm about ready to feed her some uh, North Fin pellets. We're gonna put her over here off to the side. You're gonna see her attack her pellets right there. There she goes, she's eating, she's gonna be happy. And then we're gonna zoom up on the fry here. Look at them, look how big they're getting. They look just like mommy. Um, I'm not sure exactly when the sex will change uh, from male to female, but this is what I've been feeding them. I've been feeding them, let's see if you guys can see this. There you go, Ocean Nutrition Cichlid Veggie Formula, okay? Strictly made for Mbuna. It's a high vegetation or vegetarian diet, and it's basically a flake. So what I do, what I've been doing, is I would just get a little pinch here, and as you can see the flakes, very little. And then what I do is I put it in between my two, in my index finger and my thumb, and just roll it, and see if we can get a shot of this and just roll it and sprinkle the flakes right above. 
and watch these dudes go to town. I'm going to put a little bit more just because there wasn't that much. So, so you can see there's some big flakes, some small flakes, and you'll see these little guys just go to town. Actually, you know what? I'll put a little, I'll put a big flake in there too. That way you guys can see them actually tear it up. And so watch these dudes. I'm actually going to push some of the flakes down so they sink. And then we'll be able to see them just go to town. Look at them. Look at them just attack that like a piranha. Sorry if you can't see it from the background, but all 18 are doing healthy. There is another one that's outside of this breeder box. I don't know where it's at. I haven't seen it lately, but hopefully it's been uh, getting some scraps from outside the tank. But for the most part, I kept them all inside this breeder box. They've been doing great. We're going to do a water change on the 55 gallon when we put Susan Lucci back in. But these dudes here are doing fantastic. Let's get a top view of this. You can see them from the top. Boom, just attacking that top. All right, guys, so before we go on, I just want to give the Aloha Positive Comment shout out. We're going to do two this week because last week's video was tragedy, as you guys can see. Or if you saw the last video with the pond and the kerosene and the uh, tiki torches, a uh, complete tragedy. Um, mentally, I wasn't there, so I didn't give a positive comment shout out. So this week, we're going to do two. So we're going to go back one two videos ago okay and uh this a positive comment shout out is going to arza sky freeze and if i destroyed that i'm so sorry it's right here okay um she said i love your channel i enjoy seeing the care and love you put into all of your aquariums and ponds great video brother mel i really appreciate it i'm gonna put the link she's referring to that video i'm gonna put the link right here so you can go ahead and click it and check out that video and then what we're gonna do now is for this week's aloha positive comment shout out it is going to fun fishology yep last week she commented and said so glad the fish are okay i never would have thought about it being dangerous to have the torches around great video that was intense and you're right fun fishology it was intense it was a long stressful night but so well worth it in the end i'll leave a link to that video up here too as well that happens to be the video on the tragedy of tiki falls 2.0 we got hit with like some mini like hurricane in sacramento when, when do you ever get hit with a hurricane it was windy it was cold it was raining um things were blown around you just got to check out the video but i just wanted to give those two aloha positive comment shout outs to you ladies thank you guys so much hey i appreciate you guys much love and aloha to you both boom we are inside junior peacock's room behind me the 55 gallon imbuna tank um they think i'm gonna feed them but i'm not so before we do the big major water change i wanted to show you guys what the tank looks like because what they're known for and most african cichlids are they constantly are digging through the sand now in buna especially will dig caverns underneath the rock so if you don't stack if you're using real rock and you don't stack it nicely and make sure it's stable they'll dig underneath that to where the rocks will shift and could fall potentially break the glass you don't want that to happen so when you do stack rock in an embuna tank make sure it's secure make sure you have it leaning to where it's not going to shift and fall um, but that's what they'll do they'll dig these little caverns and tunnels and, and and you'll see all the little holes they'll dig down to the glass uh it's crazy so the reason why i want to show you guys that is because it's kind of the major key before I actually do the whole like bringing Susan Lucci in. I wanted to show you guys my trick on what I do. And uh, yes, I said major key. So major key, let's go. Ha. All right, so like I was saying, you can see them. They dug down to the glass. You can see the sand in between the rocks, how they dig down to the glass. Back there, it's just straight bare bottom there. And then you can see this little tunnel in here. Then look at the sand, look at the buildup on the side here. That's how deep they dig. They will dig down to the bottom of your tank. So you gotta make sure that you first have a lot of sand, and then second, when you stack your rock, like I did here, this lava rock, make sure it's stacked um, pretty solid and stable. Um, it's so shifty, you can see down there the, uh, I think that's the Synodonis catfish down there. And uh, anyways, 
So I wanted to show you guys the tank. So what I'm basically going to do is when we do this water change, I'm going to take all this sand here, fill in all the holes, right? Because these holes are like their beds at night. So I'm going to fill in all these holes, um, smooth out the sand. We're going to take these lava rock here. We're going to kind of restack them, not the whole thing, but we're going to restack some of these rock, give them a different look, a different vibe. So that way they think, oh man, we're starting all over again. There's no territory right now. They're going to start fresh. Then I'm going to add Susan Lucci. Then we're going to fill the water back up. That's my little trick. And we're going to get into it right now. Boom. As you can see, we are back. Now I wanted to show you guys something. This is my weapon of choice. When it comes to aquascaping, moving sand or substrate around, hell, even grabbing stuff, this is what I use. Yes, the good old fashioned back scratcher. You can pick this up anywhere and it's really cheap. Pretty long too, made out of bamboo. And it's very easy to use when moving substrate around, moving a rock, grabbing something from the bottom. It's kind of what I use. Maybe taking a drink of some soup. Anyways, you guys should pick up one of these back scratchers. It's one of my little tips and tricks for today's little like video. All right, so let's get back to it. And look at that. See how it digs the sand up? Look at that. We're gonna fill in all these holes that these guys have constructed. Look at them, they're, they're pretty mad. They're pretty mad, but guess what? Don't care. Don't care. We're gonna fill in all these holes. Let me grab this, grab this sand. We're gonna move this substrate. Fill in the holes, baby. Fill in the holes. Grab some more of this substrate. Fill in the holes. We're making new houses here. We're making new houses. Demolition is in town. Johanny does not like it. But guess what? The landlord doesn't care. You gotta pay your rent, homie. Pay your rent. It's a great aquascaping tool too, just so you guys know. Look, these dudes are wondering what is going on here. Oh, look at those Gucci. Hey, what's up, Gucci? What's up, Gooch? And now we're gonna move some rock around just a little bit, nothing too extreme. So we're just gonna take like this rock here, maybe set it down here towards the end, make it a little leaner there. Maybe take this top rock off here, maybe place it up top here instead. So now we kind of have it a little bit set up differently. All right guys, so as you can see, the water is down about 70%, give or take a few percentages. We're gonna go get some fresh water, dechlorinate it, obviously, add it here. But before we do, we're gonna go net Susan Lucci, introduce her to this tank where things are kind of chaotic. You know, scape has kind of moved around. All the holes are filled in. We got um, holes are filled in and we got <laughs> sand and all the patches um, filled, <laughs> filled up, all right? So everything's looking good right now as planned. So I hope everything goes smooth when we introduce Susan Lucci to the tank and reintroduce her to Gucci, all right? Um, I wanted to show you guys here, if you, if you can see this tank, it's a 55 gallon tank. We got two HOBs on the back for filtration. There's 75 gallons each one. And then we also have down below in the canister filter underneath as you can see, is a Fluval 306, which is good up to, I believe, 75 gallons, if I'm not mistaken. And just wanted to give you guys a heads up. This was an old dresser of mine, and so what I did was hollow out the drawers, right? So I just cut out this and cut this one out so they fit right over the canister filter. So I wanted to show you guys this little trick that I did. If you guys ever have an old light stand or an old dresser like this, you can actually modify it by putting in the uh, and hiding the canister filter. As you can see, I kind of went back there and saw and grinded up um, the opening in the back there. But uh, yeah, just wanted to share that tip and trick with you guys. Then we have these two HOBs on the back. And you know that song, that, that, that you guys heard that song before, right? You gotta have an H-O-B if you wanna be with me. Gotta have an H-O-B if you wanna be with me.
Now we're going to try to net Susan Nucci by using the dim mock technique. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know what the dim mock is, but it's the death touch translation. All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, entice her with some flake food up top. Hopefully she comes up like she is, and then we can net her. So let's see if we can do this. She's pretty fast. So let's see if we can pin her up against the glass. I'm not sure. She's not feeling it. Oh, and that was pretty easy. Gosh, I'm such a master at this. The dim box. So we're going to go ahead and net her. And we are going to take her to the 55 gal. Let's go. All right. Sorry, baby. I'm sorry, Susan. Sorry, Susan Looch. So, sorry, Susan. Lazy. Let's kind of let her go down out over here. There she goes. Maybe I'll stir the pot up a little bit with this net. Cause a little bit of confusion. God, you already know what time it is. I call this, it's Deion Sanders time. It's prime time, baby. Prime time. Dechlorinate, 50 gallons of water. And you already know we're going to pour a little out for the homies. Just a little bit. Can't forget them. The water change is complete. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some food to cause a little bit of more distraction and get these guys focused. This is North Fin. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's like 80-20, so 80% vegetarian, 20% uh, high protein, North Fin. We're gonna go ahead and pour it in and watch them. There we go. So watch them all come out. Everybody's in there. Susan Lucci is in there. There she is. We know she's fertile, Miss Fertile Myrtle. We got Gucci right there. Susan, Lucci, and Gucci reunited. All right, here they are. Everybody's happy. Everybody's full. Uh, they all have full bellies, just kind of cruising around, claiming their territory because we did move the substrate. We moved the substrate around. We patched up all the holes. We moved some of the lava rock around to rescape. Everybody's kind of like uh, control alt delete, and um, they're kind of reclaiming their little territory. Um, but everybody's happy. You got Susan Lucci up here. They're all eating. She's doing great. We got Gucci here. And um, nothing out of the ordinary after the big water change. There's a lot of distractions, you know. You got a big water change. You got the rescape. You got the uh, substrate. So um, I've been using this technique, and it is a procedure, you know. Anytime I add new fish, they go to a quarantine um, for at least two, three weeks. I watch them very closely, and then when I add them or getting ready to add fish to this 55-gallon tank, um, you know, I add anywhere between one, two you know, fish at a time, and I do the same procedure, and it works every single time. So far, so good. I got to knock on wood. I don't know if it's the fish I get or, you know, it, it has to be a little bit of the distraction too as well, but it's a big water change, 70 to 75% um, filling in all the holes of the substrate with the back scratcher <laughs> and then moving the lava rock around, rescaping. So everybody's got to claim their new territory and then adding the fish before you fill the tank up that's the key and then adding a little food to uh distract them even more so everybody's eating everybody's full and there's not going to be any like aggression as far as like you know trying to eat each other because they all they're all full anyways that's it all right guys so i hope you enjoyed this video hey real fast before i go i gotta give a couple shout outs the first shout out is going to my boys the hawaii heat seventh grade aau basketball team phenomenal job this weekend boys i told them that if they won i'd give them a shout out on youtube on my channel the hawaiian peacock so here's your shout out boys i played them up a grade so they played up uh, a whole grade they're seventh graders i put them in the eighth grade division one they went three and oh smashed the competition played phenomenal team basketball if you guys want to see a group of boys um play some great basketball go check out at Hawaii Heat on Instagram, Hawaii Heat on Facebook too as well. Check them out. I'm telling you, they're talented. Um, I'm so blessed to have them and coach them. I've been coaching some of them four or five years now. And um, 
just the team unity, the team chemistry that they have, it's phenomenal. It's like no other. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in team always beats talent, and they are living proof of that. So there's your shout-out, boys. I love you guys. Coach Mel will see you guys at practice. The other shout-out goes to all my subscribers, especially the ones that commented on the Tiki Falls tragedy. You guys were so positive with the comments. Um, I thought I was gonna get a lot of backlash because of the bonehead rookie move that I did with the Tiki torches and the kerosene leaking into the pond. But you guys gave me nothing but love and support. And that's what it's about, man. That spirit of aloha, you guys all have it. You, get, you know why? Because you guys are part of the Hawaiian Peacock Ohana. All right? Be a part of the Ohana, guys. Be a part of my peacock nest you guys are here in my house with me uh, when i put out videos you guys pretty much probably have the layout of my nest anyways thank you guys so much subscribe if you haven't um also hit that notification bell too that's gonna notify you when i put out a new video that's all it does hit that bell don't forget to like and share videos that'll help the channel grow and if you like it that would be cool or if you don't like it that would be cool i guess cool but not cool <laughs> But anyways, thank you guys again for all the love and support. I really do appreciate it. Behind me here, 10-gallon tank. I figured I'd just leave with the 10-gallon Zen 2.0 tank. Everybody's doing great in there. You got Mr. Angel, the Beta. He's cruising around. Um, you got the Corydoras in there, a, a Mono Shrimp, and uh, the Nearite Snails. So everybody's doing fine. And don't forget that beautiful centerpiece right there. That's the bonsai tree I made. I'll leave a link right up here for the bonsai tree make. If you guys want to check it out and uh, check out an easy way of making a bonsai tree for your tanks, go check out that video. It's pretty dope. Pretty simple, too. It's not even that hard. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Hey, you know the saying. Happy fish, happy life, much love, and aloha. Shh. Every, every day, all the water she